And now these super forecasters, they really came from all walks of life. But one of the things you point out in the book is that what makes a good forecaster is really how you think. And can you talk a little bit about what do you mean by that and what are some of the unifying characteristics of super forecasters? Well, it, it, when you ask people in the political world who has good judgment, the answer typically is people who think like me. So liberals tend to think that liberals have good judgment and if you have good forecasting judgment and conservatives tend to think that they're better at it. Um, it, it turns out to be the case that, that uh, forecast, good forecast, forecasting accuracy is not very closely associated with, 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 with ideology. There's a slight tendency for people who are the super forecasters uh, to be uh, more moderate and, and less ideological. Um, but there, there are lots of super forecasters who have strong opinions. Uh, what distinguishes super forecasters is their ability to put aside their opinions, at least temporarily, and just focus on accuracy. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's a very demanding exercise for people. Now, are there things you mentioned, and like at the end of the book, you have 10 commandments for super forecasters. And so I'm wondering now, with the super forecasters, are there ways to make even super forecasters better? Are there conditions or environments to make them, I guess, super, super forecasters? <laughs> super, super forecasters. Well, um, ev ev eventually, um, you're going to reach a point where you're not going to be able to get any better because, the, as I mentioned, the, some envir the environment itself has some degree of irreducible uncertainty. So no matter how good you are, uh, you're not, you're not going to do a very good job probably predicting what the value of Google is going to be next week on the, on the um, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, there, so there are some things that are very difficult to do, and um, it's not clear that the super forecast, you, even using super forecasters, is going to let you make appreciable headway on that. Um, but there are many things that are quite doable that we previously didn't think were doable, and uh, you, there's a lot of room for improving the accuracy of probability judgments on those things. Um, those are things like predicting uh, whether international conflicts are going to escalate or de-escalate, whether certain treaties are going to be signed or approved by le legislatures, um, what, 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 whether Greece is going to leave the Eurozone. So there are a lot of problems that you know, have relevance to financial markets, have relevance to business decisions, um, where there is potential for improving probability judgment, where we have shown that experimentally now in the IARPA tournament. Um, but where people typically don't, don't do that. People typically rely on vague verbiage forecasts. They, people say, well, I think it's possible, or this could happen, this might happen, it's likely. Um, those are terms that you know, are informative at some level, but they're not all that informative. Um, if, you, if I say that something could happen, for example, you know, Greece could leave the Eurozone by the end of 2017, what does that mean? It could, I, it could mean I think there's a probability of 1% or 99%. Uh, or, you know, we could be hit by an asteroid tomorrow. Right. Uh, we, I mean, we, anything you know, <laughs> could happen. The, the sun could rise tomorrow. Yeah, I know they're, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, elastic word. So um, the... Asking people to make crude quantitative judgments, which become progressively more refined over time, uh, is a very good way to uh, both keep score and get better at it. Thank <laughs> you.